Hello and welcome back to this video and analyzing Alice in Wonderland for the purposes of DH using this spacey module uh, module in Python. So in this video, we're going to be doing something kind of similar in the last video. In the last video, we broke down all of this first chapter uh, into individual sentences so that we could start analyzing those sentences. In this video, we're going to start trying to do some more complex things. Now that we have all sentences separated out, we can start to analyze each of those sentences individually. So let's go ahead and do that with this sentence here, sentence two in our list, which is this chunk of data right here. So I'm going to make this into sentence equals that. And that's going to print uh, allow for me to print off, um, just show you what it's doing, uh, just this, oop, helps if you spell it correctly. Uh, it's going to print off just this individual sentence just to make sure I've loaded that object incorrectly. Fantastic, I have. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a series of entities with the ENTS object. This is the Pythonic way to do this, do this in the spacey documentation. And we're going to make this equal to list. So we're going to make it into a list. And we're going to say sentence.ENTS. And what this is going to do, much like the sentences one, is it's going to break down that object and make it into the sentence and make it into a spacey object. And that spacey object is going to look for all instances of named entities in a uh, in a text. And so what it's going to do is allow us to print off ints. And if we print this off correctly, and we run through this correctly, we should get, and there you are, one occurrence. It's white rabbit. I know what you're thinking. White rabbit should not be a named entity because it's a white rabbit. Well, the reason why it's grabbing it is because it's capitalized. And in Lewis Carroll's work, uh, Alice in Wonderland, he capitalized the white rabbit, which means it functions more as a proper noun, uh, but as a named entity, something that actually has a specific name corresponding to it. So that's what it's done. It's extracted and found named entities. What's really nice about NLPs like Spacey <clears throat> is that it's not just going to find uh, capitalized words, it'll find lowercase named entities, and it'll also get rid of any occurrence and not ignore a lot of occurrences where a capital word is the start of a sentence. It's not going to even look for that. It will, however, look for that and grab it if it's a proper noun. My point in this is that using uh, something like spacey to find proper nouns and named entities in a text is much more efficient. It'll return far more true positives you might have a few false positives. That th those are easy to sort through, and I'll show you that right now. So <clears throat> if we change this from sentences to doc and call in the entire chapter, you're going to see with the small model, we're going to have a lot of false positives. <clears throat> so it's grabbed this right here, one period space down. This is the start of the chapter. It's not an actual person. It's not a named entity or anything like that. This is just a false positive. <clears throat> and if we keep on going through, we'll see the same thing happening with waistcoat pocket. It's capitalized. That's probably why the NLP is grabbing it here. Same thing with orange marmalade. These are false positives. 4,000 miles, not a named entity. These are false positives. If, however, we load in the large model, and this is going to take a little bit longer to do, what you're going to find is that the return list is very different. It's a lot more true positives, and it's got fewer false positives. So we see Alice, Alice, the hot day, Alice, rabbit, Alice, Alice, all it keeps on going on a lot. Some false positives are still in there, but you're grabbing really important true positives and not just people, but named places, named entities that are locations. So that's how you extract named entities. But the cool thing about NLPs like Spacey is <clears throat> you can do far more than just that. This ints function is actually being stored as a tuple in the background. So what I want to do is I want to go through this list. I'm going to just go back to sentence. Uh, actually, we're going to do sentence, and we're going to change this to sentence one so I can make sure that I grab Alice. And I'll show you. We're just going to run it through. We're going to do the small model right now. Run this instead. So we're going to run it through the small model so it's a little faster. And it's, I ran it twice, once with the large, once with the small. That's why it came out twice. So now what we need to do is start extracting some more significant metadata from this because the tuple that's happening in the background is actually full of metadata. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to print off ints zero and we're going to print off dot label. This is going to be a numerical value. I'm going to explain this in a later video. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're also going to print off label underscore. And you're going to see what that is in just a second. And dot text. 
So what label underscore uh, and uh, ends dot uh, text are going to do is it's going to actually give us not only the actual text, Alice, it's also going to tell us what Alice is. So let's go ahead and run this. And we see the numerical value here. Again, I'm going to explain that later. Uh, and then we have person. So it's actually identified Alice as a person. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's obvious. Alice is a person. Why is that such a big deal? Well, having metadata is actually incredible, incredibly powerful. So if, for example, I wanted to do something like this, I can run all of this instances of, um, I can have ints equal to list doc, look at the entire chapter. Now that I know I can extract this important piece of metadata with this dot label underscore, I can do something pretty cool. So I can say for x and ints, I actually probably say int, this is the way you're supposed to do it, int and ints, going through this for loop, I'm going to make another object up here called people, make that a list. And what I'm going to say is if int dot, uh, if int dot text, oops, sorry, label underscore is equal to person. See, I can call that. Then I want to people dot append int. And now what I can do is print off a list of people. And what I have here is a pretty good cleaned up list of all instances. And what you can do also is you can delete duplicates from that list and not have all those. As you can tell, you're still going to have to clean up some of this data. You still have some false positives like I underscore down. And just out of curiosity, I'm going to run this through the large model and see what happens. I didn't do that before. Uh, like I said, I'm using the small model just because it's so much more uh, efficient and quick to go through in a tutorial series. As you can see, we've, we've extracted a much cleaner list with a large model. All of these, I am not seeing any far, false positives at all. Rabbit, like we said before, is a proper noun. It's grabbing it. Fantastic. Uh, yep, it's grabbed everything that's an actual person. I don't see any false positives and all true positives. So that, that's fantastic. We actually were able to extract that. And now that you're able to do that, really the your imagination is your limit. If you're trying to extract a list of people in a text, you can do this very efficiently. You can get all the characters from a text within a few seconds. We're just doing this for the first chapter. Should I wish I could go through and do this for the entire text? Uh, it would take a little bit longer, but I could get an entire list of people. Like I said, you can also go through and just delete all the duplicates, should you wish, but then just to get a single list. But that's what you can do with NLP. That's what you can do with this ints thing. Uh, that's what you can do to extract all named entities. That's going to be it for this video. In the next video, we're going to start doing some uh, more advanced things with this. We're going to start looking for not just named entities, but nouns and noun chunks. And I'm going to explain to you why those are different in the next video. That's all for this one, though. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below and visit us at pythonhumanities.com.